Hey everyone, in this episode, we're gonna be going over the best practices for the property management agreement. This is Brad Larson, founder of the Property Management Mastermind a Facebook group with over 12,000 plus hand-picked members contributing more posts and responses than any other organized property management focus group around. I'm also the owner of RentWorks Property Management, managing over a thousand homes in the San Antonio and Austin, Texas area, and your faithful podcast host, contributing to the industry with over seven years of podcasting on this space. So this is good stuff. So word on the quick new format we have, we have uh, came up with this idea a while ago and then we started to implement it here this year. We're going to be taking Facebook questions and elaborating them in long form. So if you have a question or a comment or a concern, uh, put it on the Facebook group. And if it's worthy of a good episode here, we're going to rip it off, as you would say, give you full credit and then have a long discussion on it here on the podcast show. And so I came up with this title off of a pretty neat post and uh, it got a lot of traction actually. So Miss Jacqueline Lee asked, what is something in your management agreement that might be, let me start over. What is something in your management agreement that might not be customary, but you have added over time and find super important to have? And that reached 806 post reaches. I had 15 plus comments that were all pretty strong in there. And it started me thinking, you know, this is really something that needs to be elaborated on because there's there's nothing I could just put in one comment reply on the Facebook that would do it justice because there's quite a bit that has gone into the RentWorks property management agreement, which has evolved a big time through the last 10, 12 years. And I say that, let me kind of give you some background here. So in our property management agreement here in Texas, we have the opportunity to use a custom agreement. And so to use a custom agreement outside of the state promulgated uh, form, uh, you have to have it attorney reviewed and submitted to TREC for approval, Texas Real Estate Commission for approval. So this is pretty interesting because what we end up doing is we created a Word document and I hand wrote the agreement just about 10 or 11 years ago, basically taking the best parts from the Texas Association Realtors Agreement, the Apartment Association's agreement for uh, their usage and put it all together and have been refining it and changing it and changing it, refining it for the last decade. So what we have today is basically a compilation of that and it works darn good. I mean, it really does. You can add it, add to it, you can subtract to it at any time. You don't have to have 10 uh, addendums. So let's say you use a state form and, and you have a good idea one day and say, you know what, oh, I wanna do this in my, in my property management. I wanna say this, this, and this. And that's not a bad idea. So to steal another comment out of the Facebook group, Joshua Bowen said, uh, owner further agrees that normal property management does not include providing on-site services for third-party inspections, property sales. And he went on to list like 15 or 16 things. Key point there is does not include. And I like that. He actually spelled out what we do and don't do as a property management uh, company or, or service provider. But we also do the same thing. And I think a lot of agreements do that. So it might be a hair redundant, but I don't blame him for saying it because too often we get the call of, hey, can you drive by there and check my garbage cans or can you make sure the, the uh, porch light is still on? And you get all kinds of crazy you know, requests from legal advice to, hey, can you fight my property taxes for me, right? Can you uh, pay my HOA dues for me? Can you pay my mortgage for me? Can you help me get this home refinanced by allowing the appraiser to get in there? Can you get it prepared for sale so I can list it with somebody else? I mean, you get all kinds of craziness that people will request and having those expectations up front in writing will certainly help. So to dig in a bit further with the property management agreement that we use, going back to the, the semi story I was talking about in the beginning, we start with a Word document and we created a very nice looking form. I actually went on to Fiverr, which is, uh, again, this is a decade ago, I went on to Fiverr and engaged with somebody, I can't remember where, and had them convert it into a very nice Word file. And all the stuff that came out of those two agreements I mentioned, the state promulgated form and the apartment association promulgated forms, I basically told them to rip it off. Like, however you gotta do it in your software, they copied all that and they put it onto that Word agreement, and then I changed everything inside of it. I mean, there's not a single part in there 
that would look like the original two agreements because I spent a lot of time going through it. And then I had two attorneys review that and they blessed off on it. And so with the, the stronger attorney, he actually went to the key person at the Texas Real Estate Commission and got the whole agreement signed off on as, as to the letter of the law. As far as if you're going to use a custom agreement, you have to actually go through a few steps to make sure you can use it. So the Word document is a key point because this can now be turned into a PDF form and then turned into a signable widget, which means you can post this to your website, you can include it into your auto signature, you can put it out there to where you never have to initiate pushing out an agreement. So in contrast, if you have, if you have a property management agreement on DocuSign, for example, uh, you put it into a Word document, you put it into a PDF, you take a state promulgated form and you slap it inside of DocuSign, you will have to fill out or put in every sort of box that you have to almost on a repetitive basis. Yes, they have templates. Okay, don't argue with me there. But we're going, the, the point of that is you got to push it out. You got to push it out to a particular owner that wants to sign that because you might have had to fill in a bunch of, of information for them. With this widget concept, we can put it out and it's posted under our website. Go to rentworks.com. You can find it there. Uh, it's posted onto the website where an owner can say, you know what? I'm ready to sign. Where, how do I start? And it's all right there. They just pull up the you know, of course, we give them links to make it easy, but they could go onto our website and begin to fill it out without ever having to talk to us or without us ever having to push it out to them. So this goes really well for online presentations, you know, Zoom presentations, uh, you know, here the, the final close could be, OK, when you're ready to begin filling out our agreement, you just click on this link. You can go to the website and find it here, click on it and start filling it out. So be prepared for about 30 minutes to an hour to fill it out. We ask for a lot of information. But that is an awesome, awesome deal because you don't have to push out the agreements. Owners can just go into it and just start knocking it out right then and there. So it's a great way to close the loop on getting the agreement signed because it's one thing to get them to say, yes, I want to hire you as a property manager. What do I do? Well, let me go back to my office. Let me fill out a form for you. Let me push it out to you. And given a, you know, give me about a half a day to a day to get that going. It just delays that process. And sometimes, you know, the what ifs happen, like what if they decided to go somewhere else? What if you can't get back to them right away? What if they reached out to you via email on a Friday afternoon, you didn't get back to them on a Monday morning, until Monday morning, and they're like, heck with it, I found another manager. So those what ifs were eliminating. And that's, again, that's just a little bit of salesmanship inside of the property management agreement, we're, but we're going to get to some bigger stuff that I think you're going to dig. And so key points inside of here is we created a summary on the front part of the property management agreement. And so what I want to hone in on this is there's all these things that people are going to want to understand up front. And what you want to be able to do is summarize it right then and there for them so they don't have to dig. So it, you don't you don't feel like you're hiding anything. So of course we have our, you know, all the state forms, your information about brokers, your services and all that good stuff. But on the very second page of our agreement, we have all of our property management features to include our management fee, initial setup, owner benefits package, which I'm going to go into at length. You're welcome, because that's pretty good stuff. Leasing commission, renewal commission, initial code work, Zillow marketing, and premium photos and videos that we do. So we lay it all out there. And the key points, the big ones, forget all the other junk at the end. Forget what you want to take away from this is we have two plans. We have a, tr a traditional plan and an MPO plan, which is a multiple property owner plan. And we highlight up front what we charge for a management fee, what's our initial setup, what is our owner benefits package, what is our leasing commission and our renewal commission. Those are the big ones that people want to understand. And we want to feel like we're not hiding that at all because that's a key point. Now, let's go through the owner benefits package. So in addition to what we charge monthly for our traditional plan, not our MPO plan, okay, this does not count for the MP MPO plan, this only counts for our, our uh, traditional X plan. I don't want to quote numbers too much into this podcast to make sure we don't get any to, into any weird territory, but let's call it a X percent, right, on your traditional plan. The owner benefits package goes on top of that. So a lot of us have heard of the resident benefits package or the tenant benefit package or anything like that. The, the, you can mix the names up however you want. 
The owner benefits package is, is the same kind of a concept. It goes back towards the owner. It's an additional monthly charge. It's a mandatory charge for our traditional plans. However, there's a lot in here. I'm gonna go through this at length. So inside that monthly owner benefits package, we include free annual exterior assessments. So what that means is we have a roofing contractor provider. They go out and do a free walk around and a get up on the roof type of a scenario and look for things that are potential issues. They create a very nice five, six, 10 page report with pictures and they send that back to us. And then we look at it and say, whoa, we got to forward this to the owner. And here it is on the, on the owner's side, they get this report. There's a hole in the roof and included in that report is a bid for work. Uh, the bid is going to say, uh, to fix this hole in the roof that we found on our free annual exterior assessment, it'll be $2,200. Okay, if you approve, give us a call, we'll get it all worked out, all that good stuff. And so we put that in front of our owners free every single year on our annual exterior assessment. So that's a part of the owner benefits package. Now, we also do not charge any maintenance oversight fees. So nothing on the top line is charged to the owners at the 10%, uh, the X percent, right? Sorry, I backed that up. The X percent traditional plan, we don't charge any maintenance oversight fees. So that is a key point because what we found is owners don't want to get hit with a, a X percent on top of the invoice fee. It gets a little off-putting. And if you do that, I would encourage you to do an X percent fee, but cap it at X, X dollars. I know I have to speak in these X's. I hate it. But gang, you got to understand, you know, the, the, there's a lot of people out there that will scream at me if I mention a, a cost because they're going to implement me as some sort of like antitrust swimming up the stream type of a person. Back to this, the all maintenance oversight fees are included, which really our feedback from the owners have been fantastic. We've been running this program for, I'm going to say three years now. We just keep adding on to it as well and improving on it. Owners don't like to be nickel and dime with maintenance oversight fees. So that's a good part inside of this. In addition, we offer a free annual home assessment. So there's two assessments we're getting every year for free. One is the exterior annual assessment, and one is the interior annual assessment. Now, we conduct the free annual home assessment using Z-Inspector. And we have our own technicians. They schedule an inspection slash assessment, however you want to call it. They meet with the tenant. They do a vacant walkthrough. They do the, the pre-listing walkthrough. I mean, whatever scenario you need an annual assessment done, they're doing one of those a year on behalf of the owners, particularly on the renewal part. That's where it gets, you know, because a lot of people would charge 95 or 150 or whatever the fee might be for an annual assessment. We include it for free. Also, we do a free annual HVAC inspection. We work with a local vendor. The vendor charges us every single year. We get charged, the company gets charged, and we have that vendor go out and do an annual HVAC inspection. Yes, it produces things that are issues, but it can be a preventative situation where instead of the air conditioning crapping out in July, and now the owner has to uh, wait two to three to four days, they have to offer reimbursements, they have to, they have a ticked off tenant, uh, you have a health and safety issue with a potentially pregnant home wo woman in the home, or a uh, handicapped person in the home. So those things are, are really good stuff, a free annual HVAC inspection. We also offer the free rollover utility management. So when the tenant is outgoing, we will manage the utilities as needed on behalf of the owner. Again, on behalf of the owner. We're not doing the tenant's job, but we're doing the owner's job and handling those utilities to ensure that there is a make ready that can be done. Why do we do that? Because so many times, you're going to see this, the tenants, their lease is going to end the end of this month. And dang it, they called six weeks ago to make sure the utilities end at the end of this month because they're thorough people. And so you'll walk in the day after they leave, no utilities, no power, no water, nothing. And guess what? You can't do your inspections. You can't start a make ready. You can't do anything for up to two to three to five business days because the utilities are off. And it's a huge pain. We don't put that onto the owner. We take that on. So that's a big deal. So this also encourages or ensures that the owner doesn't lose days off the market. 
Because when you have uh, a make ready, dependent type of a situation before you can put the home back in the market for rent, you cannot be held up by power. Like, okay, it's so frustrating because you can't clean, you can't do anything without power and you can't make the home ready. So we make sure to take that burden on, on behalf of the owner, again, not the tenant. We, we build the utilities in our name if needed and we back bill the owners, all that for free. We also do a free rollover rekey of the home. Now in Texas, we have to bring the property to code, which means they have to have keyless deadbolts, they have to have a door viewer, uh, they have to have uh, smoke alarms. All those things are at cost to the owner on as soon as they turn the home into a rental property. But what we do is we do a free rollover. So we'll, when that tenant vacates, that's been in our system for a year or five years, whatever, tenant vacates, we rekey the home for free. So we don't charge the owner for that at rollover time inside of our owner benefits package. All of that savings is way more than what they're charged per month and it helps them control their cash flow. So essentially we're compiling down all these great features into one small monthly payment. So they're not getting hit with all of these things at once at the end or mid lease out of a surprise. We try to keep the surprises out of the mix. And this is how we found that we do it. And we think the owners dig it. We, we think they, they, the feedback we've gotten has been really good. So we think they appreciate it and understand it. And it really does uh, a service to them inside of that, the inner baseball workings of it is if you can figure out a way in your software to show what you did with a goose egg, that is really powerful. So what does that mean? So uh, on a rollover, for example, you could say in a byline item, conducted annual home assessment cost zero. Uh, conducted rollover rekey of the home cost zero. Okay, that's a lot to be said about the resident benefits package. I think you guys, you know, sh uh, I'm sorry, the owner benefits package, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. I think you guys should take a look at that and try to understand how you could implement something like that inside your business. Because I really do think that's a fantastic service and it meets our criteria because we have three standing orders, uh, get the business, keep the business and provide exceptional service. Providing exceptional service falls right into the OBP package. Now I spent quite a bit of time talking about that because I, I think it was worthy of detailing out. And also speaking of benefits, one of the biggest benefits RentWorks has found in our industry is our banking per partner. And we trust Allison Desaro with Enterprise Bank for all of our banking needs. As a side story, I'm gonna give you a little tidbit here. While I was doing a bit of shopping on loans for the commercial side of the building with RentWorks is in, I allowed a local bank here in the San Antonio area to give me an analysis of the banking credit that Enterprise Bank offers. So yes, I did shop you, I'm sorry. I, I took a, you know, had, had to take a look at it, right? Well, the, that bank locally came back and said, they can't touch Enterprise Bank's banking solution, their credits that they offer you to use and work with them. So it proved to me that again, it's been a fantastic solution to work with Allison and Enterprise Bank. For further, I would encourage you to listen to one over two episodes from episode number 26, way back in 2017. So our partnership with them has been, you know, since 16, 15, whatever, whenever it started, that shows a lot on how long she's been around and also how long their, that banking solution has worked viable for our industry. And the most recent one was episode 115, 115, 115 is a good episode to listen to where Allison talks about their new solution with Enterprise Bank. So quick little interjection there now. Back to some of the key points on the property management mastermind agreements, um, property management agreements, not masterminds. What we want to talk about, I think one of the best things we did was implement the toggle button concept. Okay. I would love to take credit for this, but I can't. I stole it. I don't know where. It wasn't from another property manager. It was just from being out and seeing things out there in the world. It's a toggle button solution. So, what does that mean? So, if on one of the first things in our property manager agreement on page one, we make the owner choose in a toggle button scenario. Again, this is the only way you can do this is with good software, meaning a Word document to a PDF widget, which is a Adobe product. And then you can fill in the blanks and fill in the spots to make these toggle buttons work to where you make a mandatory required that they got to choose one or the other. Okay, that's what a toggle button is. 
you have two choices. Home is currently occupied or vacant. Again, a required pick. So the owner has to pick occupied or vacant. Why? Every paragraph has a story in our management agreements. Why? Because how many times have you been told that the home is ready to go? Go ahead and move and roll over there and take pictures of the home. It's ready. And you show up and the place is full of stuff. They haven't moved out yet. You're like, what the, what's going on here? Well, yeah, we, the movers weren't quite over here yet, so uh, we couldn't get out. In this scenario, we would hoped they had picked occupied. And then below there, they can fill in the details. Details, they're going to occupy two weeks from, or vacate two weeks from now, so it will no longer be occupied. So that's one of a big one, and I'm gonna go through a couple others that I think are pretty cool. HOA payments. We asked if the owner wants us to make the HOA payments. They can click yes or no. Why is that important? Well, we get some owners that in the beginning, they don't know how to work with a property manager. They assume we're going to make their HOA payments. So in this scenario, a lot of them will just click no. Then it's crystal clear. They made the choice. Who's making the HOA payment? It's not a, well, I thought you were doing it. Nope, I thought you were doing it. Pointing fingers at each other. They chose it as a toggle button in the agreement. Again, this is a, a genius move. I would encourage you all to implement at some point. I ripped it off. I will not take credit. I'm just passing along what we've implemented here at RentWorks. Another one we use is property condition, lead-based paint. So in the lead-based paint addendum, I do not recommend this, but it's not going to hurt you either. I boiled down what's inside of the uh, the national lead-based paint addendum from the, from the feds and paraphrased all the wording and then put it into our word agreement. And I ended up with a toggle button at the bottom that says, was the property to be managed on this agreement built prior to 1978, yes or no? So the owner is going to indicate to you in writing in your agreement that the property is a pre-78 build, which falls into that whole lead-based paint addendum mess. Here's a good one, property lockbox options. We have two options, one free, we install a permanent lockbox affixed to your home. We decided to do this uh, uh, about a year ago because we were losing lockboxes like crazy. And you're not gonna know this unless you're a property management company operator. So all the vendors out there that do podcasting and they're gonna tell you everything that they know and, and how to run your business, well, they've never done stuff like this, so they don't know what happens to lockboxes. They, they just consider it a line item on the fancy spreadsheets that they want to tell you about or the software they want to sell you. The property lockbox options are genius here because we started affixing the permanent lockboxes under the homes under the owner's choosing, or they have option two to pay us $25 per lease agreement. Now, naturally, the smart choice is the permanent lockbox affixed to the home. That cost rent works roughly 15 bucks, and we get them from MFS Supply. They can ship them out to you in bulk. Uh, they are fixed to the home. You can put two to four keys in there and you just find a really good spot to fix it, either on the fence, on the on the, uh, the siding, uh, on the door frame, on just find a good place to screw it into the wall. And it's got a code that should never change, but every lockbox should have a different code, okay? It could be lockbox one, two, three, and the code would be four digits, you name the four, keep it on a spreadsheet, keep it inside your software, very easy to manage, but now we have a permanent lockbox because the ones that go onto the door walk away uh, because we do a lockbox move-in. We give the tenant a four-digit code, the tenant goes to the home, they access the home on their own upon lease acceptance and lease execution, and they can move themselves in upon lease execution. Well, what happens to the lockbox? Well, they take the darn thing off the door, they throw it in the hallway, and we can never get it because they never call us every every attempt we have to go get it. You know, it's essentially it's not worth driving halfway across town for a $15 lockbox. Now we have to pick up our sign. Yes. Yeah, so potentially we could pick it up during the sign pickup, but we know that the tenants make those lockboxes disappear and then they'll move out a year later, two years later, we'll see the lockbox sitting in the darn garage. Okay. So that's a long bit on the lockboxes, but there's a reason for that because we want the owners to understand, Hey, we're going to, include this in for free, or you need to go ahead and pay us 25 bucks per every lease. So if it's a rollover, they pay us 25 bucks again. 
Long explanation. Apologies there. I'm going to skip the owner's insurance because that's a long, long explanation. And there's not really a toggle button. There's just several choices they have to make because that's that's a long time to explain. Now, the other key things that we put in here I think are pretty cool. Do you have a home warranty? Yes or no? So it's a really simple question. Does owner have a home warranty? Toggle button, click yes. Toggle button, click no. It's going to be one or the other. And that has saved our bacon many times because I don't know about you guys, but uh, in doing maintenance, we'll get maintenance concluded. We'll get maintenance done. We'll send the owner a bill and the owner will call and complain and say, you know what, idiots? I had a home warranty. I told Jim Bob this in person six years ago. And, you know, you're like, okay, we don't even have, we didn't even have a Jim Bob. And you're saying you told us in person six years ago. Uh, who do we do? Who, who are we going to believe there? So in this particular button, we have covered ourselves quite a few times because if an owner says, wait a minute, I've got a home warranty and I'm mad at you because you should have called the home warranty company. All right, let's reference our agreement, paragraph XX. And here it is. Does the owner have home warranty? It says no, Mr. Owner. So at the time of completing this management agreement, you click no that you did not have a home warranty. If you have purchased one since then, that did not get into our notes and that did not go into writing with us. So sorry, but you know we're going to have to figure something out here. Another one. Periodic home assessments. We get, this is a big one that we implemented right away. First thing is when we figured out this whole toggle button idea, we were getting owners that didn't understand that we only do one free home periodic assessment, basically a renewal type of an agreement or a periodic. And I say periodic because what if you sign a five-year lease agreement? Well, there's not, a, the renewal for that is not going to come for four and a half years later. So we call it periodic because we do one every year. So the toggle button reads, we'll do one for free every single year, or optional, we'll charge you XX for an additional home condition assessment conducted every six months. So it's basically one or two every year. Which one do you want? And the second option is you're getting charged additional. They see that like, oh, okay, so you're only doing one year. I'm going to choose one year. Again, this has saved our bacon many times where you get an owner that calls up or says, hey, I thought you were doing an assessment every month. No. Paragraph 32, you chose one assessment per year conducted prior to renewal, included with the maintenance service package. Okay. Next one, resident takeover fee. This is if we have a uh, home that's already leased and an owner comes to us from either a, a different manager or from self-managing. So we want to be very clear on a takeover fee because we do charge a small little takeover fee for that. And we make them choose owner occupied, resident occupied, or vacant. And that again has one of those, those great agreements that really does work well. This one I really dig as well. It's under home inspections. We make the owner choose if they want a home inspection or they decline. Now there's a difference gang. Now explain to me, I, mean, I gotta explain this to you, so pay attention. The home assessment is just visual only. Picture, picture, video, video, 360 camera. Okay, that's a home assessment. A home inspection is from a licensed inspector doing full mechanical inspections, plumbing, electrical, uh, heating and air, all the stuff that goes inside of a home that you would typically do on a purchase of a home. And in our notes inside of our agreement, we say this will run you between $400 to $1,000, depending on the size of your home. If you want this one, click here. So this is, again, one of those where years later, an owner's selling and, oh, my God, the microwave wasn't working. And they're mad at us because their microwave's not working. Well, how are we supposed to know that? We're not licensed inspectors. We're not supposed to be checking microwaves at every turn because that's now a licensed mechanical inspection realm. Thank the state for that one. Don't blame me. All we can do is a visual assessment. If you wanted a full mechanical inspection every year, we're happy to coordinate for it, but it could run you 500 bucks, 800 bucks, depending on the size of your home. So we make them choose that. And that has really paid off big time for us. Home has a, you know, another one we make them choose. Does your home have a pool? Yes or no. Just to be clear, you know, in writing up front, what we're dealing with. So those things are going to be huge. Not to mention also your, uh, we have them fill out a W-9. And we also have them fill out a form for a military discount. So the W-9 is, you know, everyone's favorite form. Uh, they put in their social security information or their taxpayer identification number, and we get to see all that. One of the other forms we have them fill in is to back up our 21-day guarantee. 
So not to, this is a bonus footage for you guys, bonus footage time. The 21 day guarantee, essentially, we help them fill this out and we put regimented and documented price decreases, asking price decreases inside of the form. So essentially it goes like this without having to try and read it to you word for word. The first seven days we'll list at 2000 bucks. The next seven days we'll list at 1900. The last seven days until rented will rent till $1,800 something to that effect. And I mean, it could be smaller, you know, price decreases, but we, we try to fill that out almost every single time with an owner because we know that owners want more. Everybody does. Okay. It's not, it's human nature. We feel the home's going to be worth 1800. The owner says, well, my neighbor down the street just rented it for 2100. Yeah. How do you argue that? Okay. We can pull our comparables. We can see what we see, but if an owner has it in their head that they want to list for a certain price, you can only let them fail on their own property. We only let that go so far, of course, inside of our 21 day guarantee. We also mentioned that, hey, uh, if we can't get your home rented within a certain time frame, let's say 90 days, or 180 days, this is in our monthly Monday update, uh, we potentially will just cancel your agreement because you're wasting our time. You know, you get that same owner that the home should be listed for $1,800 and they want $2,800 and then they beat you up for every single week to say, why haven't you rented it for $2,800? Okay, we can't work with them. And we do put that in writing every single week to our owners that says, hey, uh, we can only recommend so far, you have to make periodic price decreases. Uh, you know, there was a owner that was upset at us and I actually talked to this owner uh, about a month ago and the owner was upset because they, uh, they weren't getting the home rented. Nest, it was higher priced. They didn't wanna do some work for the code. It seemed that the owner knew everything about everything and every single one of our Monday updates basically said no action no action no action well this owner was a real estate professional and I, I guess at the end of the day that that owner was waiting for us to tell that owner to reduce the price even though we have it in writing in several excerpts and vignettes inside of our monday morning updates uh it didn't really make any sense to me and it's very frustrating to us because all the owner had to do was say drop 50 hit send on an email that's all they had to do or drop a hundred hit send. I don't know what they, what else they, we could have done other than call the owner every single day of the week and say, do you want to drop? Do you want to drop? Do you want to drop? At a certain point, adults have to be adults. And it just seemed like this is one of the owners out there that wanted to blame everybody but themselves because the home didn't rent. The frustrating part for us is that owner fired us, went to another property manager and dropped $200 and rented it within a week. Well, no kidding, right? And so those are the frustrations of our industry. That's our bonus 21 day guarantee discussion because if you can get that laid out in writing with an owner, the chances of you renting that home quickly are substantial. And it also sets the expectations up front that you are the expert. Hey, I know what we're talking about in pricing. I can't give you this 21 day or 30 day guarantee or 45 day guarantee with the market being so soft. We can't offer you this guarantee unless you price accordingly, according to what we feel will make the home rent. The numbers on that, on a vacant home sitting for 60 or 90 days are just absolutely stupid and mind boggling. An owner would be way better off to drop 100, drop 200 a month and rent the home quickly. I'm talking within 15 days than they would renting it for $200 more two months from now. Do the math yourselves. I think you guys all get that out there. So that's something to consider. So the episode here, we talked about a lot of the toggle button scenarios inside of our property management agreement because those things are absolute gold and have been developed for over the last 10 years. And I think that's, if you steal a couple of those ideas and put those inside of your either addendums to your property management agreement or create a whole new property management agreement for you and the custom side, that's going to serve you very well. So in closing, I want to encourage you all to join us for the RentWorks Mastermind in 2024. We've got two dates announced with the first one happening in May and second one in December of 2024. These are limited events with only eight spots available for each date. Our first event was sold out and our participants raved about their experience. All of their testimonial videos are on the website. We deliver the entire playbook of starting, growing, and running a successful property management company. And in this trying time of all of the conferences going on out there, I would challenge you to see what's going to give you the best return. Is it going to be going to a conference with 500 people and getting one golden nugget or going to a conference with eight people and getting a hundred golden nuggets? So 
Go to rwmastermind.com to learn more and sign up. Hope to see you then.